coming to you from the Strings and Things studio in Ventura, California. This is Karen. This is Anne. And this is Katie. And this is the Strings Unraveled Book Club. All right. Welcome to October. Yay! Yay. Season. Best month. Other than August. <laughs> I'm distracted by the glitter in your hair. Good. That's how I want it. Yes. It's, <laughs> got, a sp- it's got a spookiness to it, which Good. is perfect for, t- yeah. for our uh, book club. So uh, this month we read My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I found a really good synopsis at tor.com um, regarding sl- what they call Slasher 101, My Heart is a Chainsaw. And it, the synopsis is Jay Daniels, or sometimes she's called JD. She's a horror-obsessed loner staggering through the final months of her senior year of high school in a very rural proof rock, Idaho. She writes extra credit papers on Slasher 101 for her history teacher, which all this time I thought it was her English teacher, but her history teacher to boost her grades, works as a custodian for the county after school and avoids being home too often. Sometimes she camps out at the rundown remains of Camp Blood. I don't. I think that's what they nicknamed it. Site of a real life slasher incident, waiting with bated breath, eager to turn 18 so she can skip town for or for another cycle of killings to kick off. So when a group of young tourists go missing at the same time as a conglomerate of wealthy families, the founders break ground across town, across, oh, sorry, across the town lake for their Terra Nova housing project. Jade can't believe her luck. Signs are lining up, including the arrival of Letha Mondragon, whom she assumes must be the fresh final girl. She's handsome, naive, kind, blush inducing. Unfortunately, the town's gruesome histories are influencing the direction of this burgeoning horror flick, and getting stuck in the cycle isn't as much relief as it was in Jade's fantasies. So, um, it's in its most obvious level, it's kind of a metafictional love letter to slasher films. Um, and I read through it first, and I didn't even real pay attention to the titles of the chapters. Mm-hmm. The the each title. Each chapter title is the name of a horror flick. Mm -hmm. And then at the very end of of most of the chapters, all except the first couple ones, because those are setting everything up, it's followed by one of her brief Slasher 101 reports. Um, Plus, within the narration, she consistently frames herself and the events occurring in her life through the rules of her favorite genre. And if you're starting to guess on the emphasis of genre rules that My Heart is a Jane, that my heart is a chainsaw aims for more than a mere reflection of the tropes you're spot on. Stephen Graham Jones simultaneous adoration for uh, as well adoration for as well as critique of the slasher shines through the whole book in a well-balanced measure. So that's basically it in a nutshell. I mean, there's, I don't want to give away before we start talking about it, but Mm -hmm. that's the, the foundation of the book. Okay. So okay, so your first question was is thoughts overall about? overall feeling not going into de- detail yet, but just overall. Um, I felt dizzy <laughs> <laughs> throughout, or just um, certainly for the first hour or two of the audiobook, and mm-hmm. then um, and but and then I, it just felt like a whirlwind that was done. Yeah. Mm. Um. I hated this book. <laughs> I, don't I mean am not to, surprised. Well, it's okay. Not, no, it, I don't mean to like. No, like, no, no. I don't mean to sh- like it on your book pick. But, no, no, no. It's, um, it's good. not anything to do with the genre. I don't mind horror books. I don't uh-huh. mind. I don't watch. I don't like watching horror because of the, like the visual part of it, but uh-huh. I don't mind reading oh, okay. horror. Um, I just didn't like the book itself. I didn't. Okay. Yeah. I, I have. Thoughts, but I will save them for when we get to, when we get to the questions. Good, right. good, good, good. No, it's good to I'm know. I'm interested in reading more from him, but mm-hmm. I have to say I did not like this book either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but slashers are not a favorite horror for me. Yeah. Um, true. So true. I will say he did a good job of like adding depth to mm-hmm. a genre of horror that is usually campy and sh- yeah, yeah, very surface. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I will say the very first part where the where the Nor- I guess the Norwegians or something, Swedish. Yeah. The, Swedish, the Swedish or the Swedish 
Sven yeah. and what I wrote her name down, but I forgot. Yeah. Uh, unimportant. Which unimportant. Which is their role. Yeah. Like their yeah. role she is never to be shows up again. Yeah, she I never was, turns literally, up. Literally, she never shows her up Her body again. never turns up. <laughs> there is clues in that first part, but because I was so confused. Right. Okay. Which is a classic way to open. Yeah. A That's like, film. I understand, like, there are some books that I'm like, I should read that again to understand exactly what happened, but I, it would be like pulling teeth for me to listen <laughs> or read this book again. I kind of feel the same way. I found, um, I was, I, so I listened to the whole thing over the course of like a week. So mm. it was all relatively fresh. I felt like I was mm-hmm. keeping up pretty well, except mm-hmm. for that. I felt like the story was so convoluted at the end that I oh, was like, yeah. what happened? Yeah. So I went on the interwebs and I did some Googling and I found a, reddit synopsis of somebody who said the same thing it's like can somebody please explain to me exactly what happened when who was where who did what and i found like a really good synopsis Mm -hmm. of like the very end of the book before you read it i'm not i want to like test my understanding Mm -hmm. like so it was a supernatural slasher Mm -hmm. (laughs) well wait 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 there's more before we get to that point because i do have questions leading up to that okay well let's save the end for the end yeah okay okay yeah okay okay there's one spoiler Okay. All right, start your questions, girl. So, uh, at first, I will say, at first, I got super excited because I, in preparation for this, I read one of his other books that is being which is made highly acclaimed, which is yeah, highly acclaimed. Is highly acclaimed. Yes. So I had great expectations, and I would say partway through, I was like, "This is not very exciting." What These book are did you read? What was the name of it? Only Good Indians. Uh-huh. Highly recommend that one. I I actually like that one better than this one. This, but you know, yeah. Um. So this one, ha- partway through, I'm like, those deaths are could, explainable. There's not really, it's not very murdery. <laughs> and then it picked up. And then you're right. It got a little confusing, I thought, with the direction and keeping track of, is she real? Is she crazy? Is she not crazy? Is that the final girl? Is this the final girl? I don't know. I mean. Well, it, I mean, I like that ultimate evolution because I really, it's one of the most endearing things about Jade is, um. That she doesn't realize she's the final girl the whole time, even right. when she's told and outright. And you, you know from the beginning yeah. that's what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. But her convincing herself the whole way till the very end. <laughs> yeah, literally. And, uh, finally coming to that freedom of self-realization. Mm-hmm. And then being forced to leave, too, for her final revenge. <laughs> so I do have a question about, like, the when we're coming to coming to reading horror fiction i'm better at reading horror than watching Mm. i don't really like watching scary things and i will say i went through and i tried to write down the list of the films mentioned Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i know i didn't get them all i i stopped with like 34 different mentions (laughs) and i know i didn't i skipped some i know i didn't quite catch them all yeah but a lot of them are going to be trash yeah. Most of yeah, most of them. There's the were. ones you've heard of, and then there's the ones you haven't heard of. And, and the ones I, well, you haven't heard of, it's like, yeah. Well, I, skip them. I did look up some of them, like Slaughter High, and I'm like, oh, that looks really cheesy, campy, <laughs> and yeah, I, I don't want to pay for that. Yeah. If it was a freebie somewhere, I yeah. would give it a look see, but that does I not will look. Say and some... I like bo- beef flakes. <laughs> yeah, some of those are worth like um, Bella and I got on that kick of monster, like going in the mm-hmm. same vein as Jaws, and we mm. watched piranha which oh, yeah. is trash yeah but, but it's, it's fun trash. fun yeah <laughs> so i wonder if some of these like at first they had chapters that when i was looking at my kindle wasn't um the full sentence until you clicked on it uh-huh. and they i had two there were two that said don't go in the <laughs> woods <laughs> once woods but the other one, and i thought oh they repeated it no the other is don't go in the house <laughs> oh yeah. don't go in there <laughs> <laughs> so okay so w- with that idea um were you are, so are you were you a fan of horror or are there certain genres or subgenres within horror like i'm more into psych thrillers the crazy guy i'm not into the supernatural and i really don't like dolls that come to life <laughs> well that is terrifying and i try to avoid them like clowns. i mean talking I, I talking tina is okay but that's only because it's only a 30 minute <laughs> <laughs> but like chucky is amusing to me but there's other horror movies where they like creepy dolls come alive and they yeah. murder people like that's not amusing that's terrifying no. yeah. um i love all i love it all like yeah i mean this year i'm just not quite feeling my 31 days of movies thing mm-hmm. but last year i spanned the whole gamut and i love it all 
yeah and i this year i am feeling a little more drawn to the 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 slasher so the <laughs> there was the fear street trilogy oh, that's uh-huh. on netflix it's an adaptation of rl stein's more teenager mm-hmm. novels and those are fun like yeah. dante and i watched them together he's 13 oh, those that, are that would fun be, those would be fun <laughs> yeah she I, says about all the whore and gore <laughs> i don't i don't mind uh i don't mind horror movies as long as there's i don't like too much like body horror um too much gore, gory porn. stuff like that oh. but also yeah. like yeah. mutanty like deformed people creepy oh. kind of stuff i'm not oh, a big yeah. fan of i don't mind a slasher movie i had seen a number of the movies she's mentioned and i also listen to a podcast that spoils movies for me so i know the plot of many of these movies oh awesome <laughs> so i'm well aware of the genre and i wa- and i don't mind watching them as long as it's in like the right circumstances uh, you know, it's fun to be scared and watch a movie. I don't mind like uh, like psychological thrillery kind of horror is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, big fan of Jaws. She mentioned that a lot. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't See, classify that as a horror movie. No, but but it's a it, but it does movie. it yeah. does have the elements and she does of classify it, it as a yeah, slasher movie. Which kind I, of. I have found that an animal an yeah, animal slasher. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she's sort of. I mean, that's sort of another aspect of nature fighting back. I mean, his themes are sophisticated in this mm-hmm. book. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I loved the framework. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is a great segue because that's my next thing is there. I found several different themes. Some of them, the classic rich versus poor mm-hmm. um, loners versus, you know, the outcasts versus mm-hmm. the rest of society. One, one uh, Reddit comment I heard said that there was also a big deal on parenting. Mm-hmm. A lot of things are, fa- you know, are like from the child's perspective, like what the childhood is, but, this one really kind of brought in expectations of how parents should be sure and how that um was heard did you guys find any other themes that you go on through there or was it just not well nature I- versus man with the grizzly being the murderer at times uh-huh. like yeah. that you know we thought and fire and yeah, yeah. well that's true there was um, lots of flood flood um, cleans- big cleansing the earth, yeah, yeah cleansing lots of the earth lots blood. of potential slashes, blood and, and fire, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, womanhood and like the demon, you know, the villainization of women by turning them into witches, which mm-hmm. becomes our our biggest villain. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love that she made the hero and the final girl a person, you know, a person of color, a, a black girl, because yeah. the trope of horror movies where the black person does not survive they're right. the first to she go she mentioned she's only one of like three black finer girls she could think yeah. of or, or yeah. she would be the third one or something mm-hmm. um so i like that turning that on the head yeah um definitely the parenting thing i mean the ultimate be- bill- villain being her horrible father i thought that was so i either i'm deaf or mm. or insensitive like i did not read between the lines of i didn't either yeah, can, we, her letter. can we talk about this yeah, yeah. that's okay you guys are segueing just perfectly <laughs> into my so who would you say is the antagonist of this book Ooh, i kind of feel like there were multiple ones but there's ultimately well jade is her own antagonist right yeah because she's very self-destructive i think by the end impulsive. of the book you're supposed to understand that, that her, her dad is the is antagonist i mean i knew he yeah. was a trashy person that he was just n- yeah uh, but i it Here's wasn't until they i would like to say why did the mother leave her that i don't know like why doesn't she live with her mom <laughs> but also her dad was mostly absent from the narrative through a lot of the book he shows up in bits and pieces he's here he's there he's at home he's at the graduation she knows she can't rely on him. But he's not him. for her. But he's not the graduation for her. No, I know. But no. like in the story yeah, itself, yeah. he's hardly there. Yeah. And by the point of the novel where you start to understand why she is the way that she is, you don't know for sure if that's true or not. Well, because she's denied it so much. Exactly. But then at the end, when she finally gets her revenge and kills her father, it's not as satisfying as it could have been because Mm-mm. you don't see him enough to be... I mean, you're mad at him. You hate him. Well, He's I would terrible. counter that, that we see him in every page and every moment Jade's there. Sure. Because, because the way she responds she, to things. She is yeah. because of the trauma of both her parents. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what was her mom at the end? People. She lives in the town. Yeah. She yeah. was absent from the end of the book. Well, they work long hours at Family Dollar. That's true. 
But I, I was just frustrated that I, I mean, knew I that do was appreciate gonna... the Dollar Tree is open till 10. That is nice. <laughs> um, I was frustrated that I knew that that was going to happen near the end. Mm-hmm. When I, Once I started to get toward the end, I was like, oh, okay, if that is actually what happened and that is the way that she is, she's not denying it. She's like admitting, yeah, my father raped me. Mm-hmm. That's why she is the way that she is. It would have been more satisfying to me to know that for certain earlier on because you're still doubting it, or at least I was mm-hmm. like Jade was. So is well, that a twist? Would, do we consider I, that a twist? I, I consider that so because, because there's... It was, Oh, go ahead. We have varying ideas. There's a lot of places where there's a lot of doubt that's sown. Like, like maybe, like maybe Letha, I wrote her name. Letha. Letha Letha is the final goal. Oh, no, maybe she's the villain and she's in in it with her dad. Yeah. Oh, no, she's just misunderstood. I mean, back and forth, there's a lot. I think that's intentional. The the, I think that's pretty artful to have done it, have made our focus. So I think you guys pretty much, my question was, according to Jade, when in one of her slasher 101s, wrongs are always punished. Um, Besides the one with her dad um, that we've all caught on, were there other wrongs that stood out for you as you were reading? Well, when is the... um, Oh, what is the disgusting friend's name? Oh, Rexall. Yeah. What, where does Rexall's end? I don't know. And if Rexall doesn't get punished, I think I might he, have wait, 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 wait. I think he does get killed early, early in the in the, in the July Fourth final. <laughs> yeah. Um. And and who, okay, it took final me a while to realize group. he works as a janitor with her, and he's the drug dealer. That's the whole ju- ju- joke about him being Rexall because he's, he's a, a he's drug not dealer currently. Anymore. A he's drug not. Dealer. That's, That's what a oh he was in high school. Is. That He's living off that. of high school glory of yeah. being a drug dealer for like Which, a week or something. Yeah. No, we're at like one incident. Yeah, he sold was, one thing, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the other thing. It's like with with all of the different options that that Jade goes through with like it could be this, it could be that, and she could explain what was about to happen to herself a million different ways. It's Theo. It's oh no, it's Letha, or Letha and Theo are in it together, or maybe it's my dad, or maybe it's Rexall, or maybe it's Mr. Holmes, or maybe it's Mr. Hardy. It's like. There were so many things that it it made me angry that at the end it actually didn't end up being any of those things. <laughs> I know. It I was like was, I didn't but, understand okay. what kind of book I was reading because the whole time it's what's happening in the world. You can explain it all. It's this, it's that. Theo killed so and so, blah, blah, blah. But then at the end, the lake witch is real. This is supernatural. <laughs> like, I mean, you well, could have, okay, it was to have led me wait, wait. to there. And that's not a twist it to wasn't, me. But it, was, it wasn't just the lake witch, though. No, I know that. But because it was. Mean, it wasn't just Theo was a murderer, too. With yeah. his nail gun? No, because the lake witch had possessed him. No. No. Wait, Here, he, let me read to no, uh, this what, red, her, uh, thread that I have. Uh, Leith. Letha's dad. dad. Yeah, yeah, he was possessed by the lake witch. Was no. he? I uh, know he Hold was. On. Just... Let me read. Let me read what this. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that he was possessed by the lake witch when he did that. Mm, I don't think so. I think he, he might have been, but I don't think that was. Okay, I... read okay. and let's analyze. Yeah. Okay, from this person, I didn't get this person's name on Reddit, but it says, "From what I understand, um, Stacy was responsible." So Stacy Graves, the lake witch, was responsible for most of the murders, which was foreshadowed. Several times, but kind of felt like it came out of nowhere because there wasn't much evidence that those killings were supernatural until she showed up herself at the end. And because there was a mundane slasher, Theo, running around right before Stacy attacked the yacht. The killing she wasn't responsible for would be the boating accident, which was just an accident. Mm -hmm. The murders in the afternoon of July 3rd, which was Theo covering up his role in shooting Mr. Holmes' um, boat by killing the witnesses. I think he means plane. Um... Yeah, it was kind of a, it was kind of a plane. So yeah. he shot Theo down Mr. Holmes. Did, Theo did, and murder. then he had to okay. kill the three construction workers because they were they were witnesses. they saw what yeah they were they witnesses saw, okay. to it. Stacy attacks the yacht while she's busy wreaking <clears throat> havoc. Jade and Letha escape unnoticed, but not by Theo, who follows them. It's ambiguous whether he and Stacy are prowling around and got caught in the bear trap. He or Stacy. Whoever it was, it's clear that they got free in time for the climax. Jade and Letha are meanwhile trapped in the elk cave for hours while shooting glasses comes across the yacht and cave. manages to save one Ugh. of the twins. Stacy makes her way to the other side of the lake at the 4th of July celebration where she plans to slaughter everyone in sight. The other survivors of the yacht massacre show up hoping to help, including Theo, though he still wants shooting glasses dead since he's still a witness. But Stacy starts killing so more havoc ensues. Uh, Jade confronts Stacy, a bunch of people die, and finally Jade gets to... F- 
gets caught on film killing killing her dad, which then she leads flees into the woods, and that's the end of the book. Yeah. So Theo, on his own volition, killed was at least murderer. three okay. people. Got it. That was my other thing. Mr. Holmes, who supposedly loved uh Proof Jade. Bob. Yeah. Like Jade. a daughter. Okay. Like story. a daughter. Like you know, or he he enjoyed having her as a student and whatever. He was I've concerned about her. I don't remember them all, but right. I remember you or whatever. And then he dies and everybody's sad. But then all of a sudden he's not dead and he's just chilling on the boat. But then he dies in the lake. But right? Why was if he loved her so much, why wasn't he out looking for her? Yeah. He just shows up and he's, he's like, because he's I'm injured. Not dead. No, he's injured. No, he yeah, was injured. I feel like he, all of a sudden he was just there. It was like, oh, I okay, feel I like he isn't dead. He really, really liked her, but, but I then don't. He died, right? Yeah, he, did die. yes. he did die. He did die. He was injured. So many red herrings. But I don't know that he was aware of how very yeah. bad her situation the was. The other thing was on the flip side of that is what Sheriff, the Sheriff Hardy. Yeah, yeah. Is he also seemed pretty concerned for her well being, mm-hmm. and he knew that she escaped from jail. But he was supposedly calling around looking for her. He was. Yeah, I guess. But, okay, don't you think it's a small town? Don't you think he yeah, knew the, what the dad was I mean, like? God bless Jade. Well, yeah, he did. That's why. Yeah, yeah that's why. What did he say to her? But he not have proof was... to arrest but that I don't, guy? I mean, I mean, it wouldn't change her, her outcome, I think. He was worried that he would beat her. Uh-huh. It, it, retribution he would didn't... happen. No. No, I he, mean, not retribution. When she was a, ba- when she was a baby, he threatened... Jade's father. That's right. Um, I don't remember the exact threat. Right. But I think that was against physical violence, not mm. against sexual violence. Right. Um, yeah. And you don't, I mean, it's just such a heinous thing. So you he never saw. That, that was possible. I think he thought, too. yeah, he think he, I think that the sheriff believed that his threat was effective because he didn't see the physical marks uh-huh. of abuse on her mm, so yeah. he probably thought he had done right by her and done enough right hmm. okay so um here's another quote final girls are the vessel we keep all our hope in but maybe that uh, when when i'm thinking about it, she was totally unaware that she was the final the final girl because why do you think she when we know she doesn't have hope yeah but th- she what did she, what do you think what was it about Letha that she put so much almost fantasy hope on her was it because she was everything that she wished she dreamed inside or what I yeah don't... like I think that she like Letha fulfilled a fantasy for Jade of of what being a girl with a good life and a good family looks like mm-hmm. yeah she yeah she both... has, she's perfect she's I mean, beauty poise money right. A, a wonderful dad, a right. dreamy mom who's there and well, present. That's a stepmom. Step what yeah. happened to the real mom? I don't remember. I don't think she, we ever got an answer. She died. Wait, they were talking about it on the swan. Boat, oh, because that was that would be her yeah. one tragedy. Because yeah. yeah, final she, girl always oh, has to have she a said, tragedy. I went to my mom's funeral. I saw her. Oh, that's mm-hmm. right. I don't know how she died, but she. Did. Yeah. That's and that's what qualified her because the final girl has to have some form of suffering and in her life. And that was another option that Jade came up with. It's like, well, maybe it's your mom that's killing everybody because she's mad yeah. at your dad <laughs> because she's he's married to a new woman. You know, yeah. I think that was another one of her uh, explanations. Yes. Yeah. But what do you think about Letha Mondragon as as a character? Was she? She's a... cardboard. Yeah. Like she's she, born. we never get any depth to her. No. Except we only see this world through Jade's eyes. Yeah. Which I. I found Jade so obnoxious. Yes. Like, well, yeah. Oh, I and even before you know why she is the way that she is, if I was reading this on my own volition, I would have given up purely because I found her so annoying. <laughs> but then you understand why she is the way that yeah. she is, and you give her a little more slack. But at the same time, it's like I, if this was a real person, well, this isn't a real person. Like, who? Yeah, I don't know. I think that that probably speaks to. Is it Stephen Graham Jones? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That speaks to his. I think that speaks to his talent as an author, even if we did not enjoy this book, because the you no, know, I said I felt dizzy in the beginning mm-hmm. when she's having her psychological breakdown, yeah, and, and having a suicide attempt. Like he did a very good job of presenting a disorganized, dysfunctioning, yeah, mindset, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, even when she's running out of the house, hoping her, I mean, think about this. Her life is so, so crappy that horror films are, are better, relaxing are, are, are relaxing yeah, and better than her whole, whole life yeah. Yeah. because of the horror show that she lives in and that she would, she would intentionally go out in the cold to, I mean, the, even, even these, the other strange loners are looking at her like, are you okay? Yeah. Seriously, I, um, you can have my coat. I did really like find her very endearing when she was doing the cleanup and she got upset by the bird, uh-huh. mm, um, mm-hmm. which made me feel like she's going to be okay. Like she's not our murderer. We're not, that's not going to be the twist. Right. No, the she can hardly, that she's so bird. unhinged that she's really doing this. Yeah. So thanks for that bone author. <laughs> so we've kind of talked about some of um, the, the elements of a slasher. They need incompetent adults. And we, we talked about Jade, Jade's dad and the sheriff and Mr. Holmes. Um, we can talk a little bit more about Jade's mom. And I still don't fully understand the mentality that she was, it was so bad for her that she left, but she didn't take, didn't her, take daughter her daughter with her. Yeah. I guess. She like, what left. A selfish person. Yeah. I mean, and she sees her daughter, and her in her idea of ever, of trying to help her along is, here, I'll pass you along. So I'll let you yeah, steal. I'll let you lift hair dye. Hair dye. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, mom. You care I... so much. Thanks. <laughs> the one now I know you this, love me. <laughs> the one part of this that I would love to see as a movie is how the makeup artist. Like I'm gonna. I feel like throwing up. Like how the makeup artist would progressively do jade's hair the Worse. way that it yeah. is described in the book of the things she does to her yeah. hair oh she, that's it's right blue, and then it's pink no it's orange and yeah. then it's blue and then it's pink and then it's supposed to be bl- green again like half green Ugh. and then it's black shoe polish, <laughs> shoe oh, polish. oh my gosh and then it's like food coloring and then it's shaven <laughs> Which finally, the, thank you for yeah, the relief. Shave your hair, like, thank you for the relief. Shave it off. <laughs> I, I started. I, mean, I would have shaved the the shoe polish off. Yeah, the shoe polish went off. <laughs> so what's interesting about that is that I'm I'm reading um a book from an author that Stephen Graham Jones recommended mm. <laughs> of a fellow author by Grady Hendrix called um Final Girls. Oh, what's it called? Final Girl Support Group. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but one of the characters says that she keeps her hair super short. No long hair. Can't grab it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's just good self-defense. That's just, guys. yeah. I mean, I'm not going to cut my hair, though. Were there, other, were there other characters in town? I mean, there's, I mean, you. I feel like for the final 4th of July, I kind of got a, a here's everybody, in, in, yeah. introduction yeah. to everybody in town just before they die. Well, all those people <laughs> had been mentioned before, but it was sort of like a wrap up. I'm like, oh yeah, remember there's uh, someone in the wheelchair. Misty Christie, the realtor. Oh, and remember, uh, remember the guy who works at the gas station? He yeah. got murdered. Yeah. And remember, see, uh, I just want to see a movie of just the final scene where I can see all the tropes I feel of like this, small town people. Yeah. This is one of those instances where I feel like it would have made a better movie than a book oh yeah oh, yeah i can see Whoa. that i would have i would have probably enjoyed this movie had i watched it but i found the book to be so slow yeah and there yeah. were also a lot of people in it you yes. know there were a lot of townies i did like her essays yeah, i love I like slasher 101 really entertaining yeah, yeah i definitely in fact watched. i took most of my questions just by studying the slasher 101 at the end of every chapter there you go <laughs> um i thought those were fun and that's probably what got me to the end of the book is like jade's i love people who are passionate about whatever they're passionate about right Mm -hmm. like i love that energy so i i I enjoyed that i feel like with her it was more than a passion more than even obsession it was her world view Mm -hmm. yeah it was exactly her she saw everything all of life was through the lens of a slasher movie Mm um how sad yeah. So there's some <laughs> Which other. Is the point, right? So there's some other elements the slasher needs is timing. They talked about timing was really important. At some points, did you find it was predictable? And other points, did it fall out of predictability? Uh, the first half of the book, I felt dragged forever. I I agree with that. And for the most part, it was relatively predictable. Until the end, when they 
the author just threw everything. I felt like just threw everything back at you, and you were like, "Oh, <laughs> overwhelmed. Oh, what, what? Where are we going? Who's that? Who's getting murdered now? Who shot who? Who has the nail gun? Who's Why in the woods? Gas mask on. Yeah, yeah. Who's the guy in the woods? Is that the headlamp? Does Theo have the headlamp? Like, there were just so many things that it was. I felt like the the pacing was weird because at the beginning it's like frenetic i really like yes this, i really liked the first chapter i liked with the swedish people they're out you know they they get murdered and then i was like Ooh, we're gonna really and, click and this and then all of a sudden it's they're gone and i was like oh okay well i guess they're just like you know the blood sacrifice like she talks about yep. how did the boat get back what boat the green boat it oh, somehow boat, made its okay, way back well, to the dock. Well, apparently it's Stacey. supernatural, yeah. so Stacy did it. Stacey did it. Pushed it back so she can get another victim? Was that how she sp- it? Yeah, no, Stacy brought it back. Yeah, I feel confident in that. But that's right, because Stacy was awake, was Stacey asleep. Stacy killed she... the blind kids, right? Yeah. 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 I'm what? mad about Stacy. <laughs> I, I was kind of glad she got finally got her revenge. I felt like I feel <laughs> no, like Stacy didn't is care a, about her. Stacy's a like a campfire story you tell the kids at camp. Yeah, she's like a precautionary tale, you know. That's why I didn't. Which, that's why I didn't that think exists, she was real. That exists in every place that you've ever lived. There's it's yeah. like, a Blair Witch Project where you didn't really get satisfaction at the end of that movie. It's very Blair Witch Project, actually. Yeah. Like. Mm. Like you're oh it's all scary and it's not falling in the camera right. and drama 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 and then everybody's in their corners and right. obviously they all died right but I don't know anything about the Blair Witch <laughs> I actually mm-hmm. really like the sequel even though it's a, another trash movie. Blair Witch is not a trash movie even if I don't uh-huh. love it but the next movie is a trash kind of slasher supernatural yeah. but there's so much more exposition so I like yeah. it because you know <laughs> I just felt like if you were going to end the book with a supernatural being being the murderer it was just disappointing because I felt like of all of the storylines and all of the options that Jade had come across most of those were more interesting than what it actually ended up being yeah and I'm like oh so witches exist like okay so this little nine-year-old girl is killing everybody but she's not dead she's you know she's but undead there's, there's rules too and i guess there's rules for cause she can go across surfaces but not underwater i, I guess and that's how they kill yeah, her yeah the lake won't accept her yeah yeah and who's dra- ezekiel oh he's like some he was a preacher that gathered everybody in when they flooded the valley mm-hmm. and they all just died and died drowned flooded town. together you yeah. know like they're kind of like town. i feel yes. yeah drown town i feel like drown town was like when those people go out in the desert waiting for the aliens to take them and then and they then all the just sort of die do take them <laughs> <laughs> like the top of the the building in um independence day where they're like i'm gonna go show them oh, yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah. I and you're that. the first to and then die. it's like oh uh-oh yeah <laughs> they had lots of okay i gotta talk about the elk cave because that was not a cave that was a pot elks weigh about 500 pounds at least each and they're all piled on top of each other. They were so like Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I'm sorry, if that falls on top of you and you're buried under it, you're dead. But you're not Lisa climbing But Lisa there. got out and dug through a pile of dead bodies. That's why I thought the and bitch she was wasn't... moving through people. Yeah. Because that was a very supernatural thing. That would have explained thing. a supernatural thing that actually Strength. didn't end up being anything supernatural. Lisa was just like, oh, I got out. Okay. Yeah, was, right. uh, that part that See, part bugged me. Honestly, I'm like, there's no I way really you got think out. The witch was possessing her at that point. She just went from place to place. Then why did just possess then... the? Why didn't she just possess the? The um. Okay, so going back to Sven. Well, see, I could. Um... Sven was in the water. If she couldn't get him because he was in the water, how did he die? That part was never answered. Yeah, mm-hmm. because she was the slasher. You know, but we, she's on top of the water, think, and he was no, in I know, the water. But like at some point, we think maybe Theo is the slasher. So that's, that's like why the I oh, issue wait, 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 wait. with the idea that Theo was underwater. I think no. and got after the guy. No, how did I he think that Theo was possessed by the lake witch, regardless of what the Reddit guy said. No, I'm yeah because I don't trust the Reddit guy. No, I understand <laughs> <laughs> because he could have shot down the the plane plane as Stacy. Yeah, but why would he? Why would Why Stacey would want Stacey the plane? Because that plane. Because look, because look, that, I'm just trying to know. connect it. No, because the plane was going has has made trips over and over and over, and and they even said 
that Theo was just annoyed that that guy kept, you know, yeah. going so to shoot that. him. Well, because he's the kind of it rich... doesn't seem like I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Awesome. I don't know. <laughs> like part of my brain felt better when you read that synopsis. Yeah, like oh okay, Theo did that, and then he killed the. King. But everything else was yeah. But but, but, then but did it? But like, how did Letha get out of the? Yeah, <laughs> how did she get out of the elk cave? <laughs> we don't know. Which is so disgusting. Yeah, it's like they talk about how they got out of the bear trap. Which okay, no one's walking around after their after their ankle got snapped well, by she was a bear trap. Combat boots. Yeah. Wait wait know. wait a minute. Who? Wait, which one? It was who Jade. Was... Yeah. But so did Theo. But so did Theo. Uh, <laughs> unless it was Stacy. But we don't know. <laughs> okay, so when she had the interview with a slasher, sort of, slasher adjacent, mm -hmm. with Christine Gillette. I love that story. Actually. I love that story, actually. <laughs> see, I, I mean, like the exposition stuff. Yeah. That was a story <laughs> that gave to me. That I like gave, that. See, yeah. that gave me the backstory of the Lake Witch. Yeah. I still didn't believe it was real. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scary story you tell kids to keep them safe around the lake, or you tell them at the campfire to scare them. But she was okay because she. Well, let's look at the ring for a second. Okay. The what? The ring has a scary, creepy girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Murdered before What's her the time. Ring? I don't know. The ring. Okay. Samara. So yeah. She the... crawls out of the TV. She got the black hair in front of her face. You've seen that reference. Yeah. You 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 would. I know probably have. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, so the premise is there's this girl killing. You watch the videotape and then in three days you die and she yeah. crawls out of your TV and she kills you from a well. Oh. Right. Okay. <laughs> um. They spent a third of that movie explaining Samara. Yeah. So like by the end, plenty. you know what's going to happen. Yeah. And there just wasn't quite, even though it's present, there just wasn't quite enough. There was oh. too many misdirections for me to care at the end when it was, ah. when it was the <laughs> well Lake stated. Witch. Yeah. Well said. So that comes to, brought, brings up a question of red herrings. And I, I agree with you. There was so many red herrings. It, yeah. It's one thing to bring me back and forth. Is it this? Is it that? Right. But when you when you're back and forth like a ping a pong ball times. over and over, it it's weird. You I just get, didn't you're tired. care anymore. You're, tired. you're like, just pick somebody just and tell me who it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. It's Fourth of it the only good thing about Fourth of July is there's gonna be a lot of killing. Yeah. <laughs> just get to it. Let's this is just get to it. I don't care that it's the night before the Fourth of July. I felt like Jade because she's like, oh, it's gonna be the Fourth of July. I'm excited for this weekend. Everybody's gonna die. <laughs> I'm like, I'm excited for the Fourth of July so I can figure out what the hell is happening. <laughs> and then I was still like, what okay. the hell is happening? <laughs> but okay. Don't you think it was a little weird that she's like, yay, it's going to die. People yeah, are gonna, it's like, I thought she it's was like, so wait a minute. Obnoxious. I'm like, but I think she was not, again, she's not looking through this is real people that are going to die until she realizes real people are dying. Yeah. She says, running through a slasher is not as fun as I thought it would be. Yes. Oh, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like okay so that's real life hitting the imagination she was just hoping the slasher hit the right people that she was hoping yeah. for <laughs> well i mean teenagers spend a lot of their time in imaginary worlds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. imagining what adulthood or what and so her imagination met real life and it's not not what she thought it was gonna which be which is except that... it was because it's exactly how, how a slasher, slasher movie is works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is what you wanted all along <laughs> Enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, so I think the only good thing that came really out of that was that she finally came to grips with what happened. Was kind of came. It was kind of put in her face what happened to her. Yeah. Yes. Um, thoughts on the ending? <laughs> we <laughs> talked about that. I think we covered. That. <laughs> we yeah. kind of covered it. <laughs> Disappointed. I'm glad that she. I kind of liked herself. it. Yeah. I like. I really liked the character development of her in the second half. The first half, I was disappointed. I was like, "This." I agree. It took two. The first two, first half of the book took so long to get through, and then it's almost like, "Oh, this movie's taking too long. Let's speed up the end." Yeah, yeah. you're like I running wish... downhill to the ending, and you're like, yes. "What? Oh, what did I? And yes. I, I, I happening? Yes. Like yeah. the bear cub. Okay, yeah, so exactly. <laughs> I understand. We are the bear. Cup it does story. need to pick up, and it yeah. needs to build momentum. It was just confusing and convoluted. There's too much, too many things to. And I was trying so hard because I know when I listen to audiobooks, I have the tendency to space out and be like, "Wait, 
how did I get here? And I have to rewind. So I, I knew. And did you listen at one and a half times? It was like 1.3 or something. No, that wasn't that fast. And I knew. I was like, I have to pay attention. This and even was paying good as close of attention as I could <laughs> have, I still was like, where am I? What's going on? You know? <laughs> Especially when they're running through the woods. It was really hard to keep track. Okay, I'm trying. In my mind, I was trying to keep track of the geography yeah. of where are the houses in relation to Camp Blood, mm-hmm. and of course she's, of course she's got an axe buried under the floor. Yeah. Um, because that's what everybody does. Um, that's what Jay does. It was that's what Jay does. Jane. Yeah. And so, where is that relation to the reservation? I there mean, isn't. just because she's think there is a reservation. There a reservation. isn't. I thought there was. I thought there was Indy lands outside of beyond Camp Blood. It was a national forest. Oh, it was a national forest. Yeah, yeah. Which there of wasn't any mention had... of reservation. I don't no. Think. Okay. There's actually sort of a point where he talks about her isolation that she's not any. She's not part of the tribe in her local right. area. Yeah. She's Blackfoot. Yeah. Yeah. Or she thought she was, and then she did some report. She thought she was whatever the local Indian tribe is in oh. Idaho, but she was actually from Montana, I think, like mm-hmm. Blackfoot territory, or her mom was, or something. That, so she was, yeah. Weird. So she wasn't what she thought she was. So she didn't feel like she fit in with the yeah. With, so it's, yeah. I mean, I think it's just looping her in mm-hmm. with her self isolation, right? In, in all the ways way. that she doesn't yeah. fit in. On a different note, just because it's been bugging me. Is Proof Rock, Idaho, a real place? I don't think so. Okay, because I think I, I look the whole that, time I not... say Proof Rock, <laughs> I've got a series of unfortunate event Proof Rock prep stuck in my head. Well, Proof Rock is a literary reference to the um, the ballad of J.D. Proof Rock. I think I think that's why oh. it gets used. Yeah, I don't think it's a real <laughs> place. I would have to look. Is that why it's a it's, it's a also a long poem from okay, somebody who I can't remember right now. Well, then I'll have to look that up because that maybe that's fact, why that is a name in. A series of unfortunate events. Yeah. Proof rock prep. But that's spelled different. I'm sorry. I think. No, I thought I thought it was P R U F R O. But in the book, it's P R O O F. Oh, like proof. in this book, it's P R O O F. It is. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, then maybe that has nothing to do. With I mean, it it, it <laughs> might be a reference. <laughs> um, there was a the love song of J. Alfred Proof Rock. There was a relatively lengthy um. Uh, author's note at the end, which I sort of skimmed through, and it was helpful in explaining where things came from, and he references a lot of works and, um, like, literary works and movies and things like that. Okay, that would be um, worth looking at, because And the he mentioned something about nothing. how he built the, uh, the town. The town, or the, yeah, the place. Or what it was inspired by, I guess. So there's a lot of different interviews that you'll find with the author and other, um, um, horror genre authors on youtube i highly recommend looking those up he's very it's very entertaining and as a it's it's fun to listen to him talk about what he does um i guess besides um besides this genre Mm -hmm. he's um he's actually a professor of literature at um use cal uh, Cal, like university of colorado boulder Mm -hmm. And, um, though he's from Texas and what's the other thing? Um, um, um oh, he's he, an interesting guy. I'd heard yeah, him interviewed he, he's about had like 40 different Indian. books, but some of them are graphic novels. <clears throat> um, but he said that those, those are actually harder. It's much harder to write a graphic novel than it is to write just a book. Cause a book you can just sit down and it kind of takes off, but when you're the only mind too, as and opposed to as, a, but he, graphic novels, a collaboration, it's a collaboration it. with like the illustrator and a f- <laughs> other. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I would highly recommend looking up, um, and listening to interviews with Stephen with, the uh, Stephen Graham Jones, Stephen, Stephen Graham, Graham Jones. Jones. Mm-hmm. I like, I like, I liked, his artistry as an author, though I did not like this book. Yeah, yeah I can imagine that he is talented, like, uh, whatever his, not his debut novel, but his, the one that he has acclaimed for that you read, yeah. that I can't remember mm-hmm. the name of. Only, only good Indians. Yeah, so I can imagine <coughs> uh, enjoying his writing, because I didn't mm-hmm. mind the way it was written. I just think that the story could have been either edited a little bit better, mm-hmm. or just organized a little bit better because i did find it interesting Mm -hmm. you know i wanted to know what happened i just was really frustrated by how it 
all came about. The development, the the development of the arc, or maybe. yeah, something like that. Um, I'm yeah, it's it's a weird feeling to want to read more, even though and I even though you didn't, didn't like, like it. <laughs> well, this is, and when you listen to him talk, he has such a really hypnotic way of speaking mm-hmm. that it that I think you I think you would enjoy only good Indians more. Yeah. So Let's give it a go. Well, I thought we had a good discussion. Yeah. Like whether we like, because we don't have to, li- sometimes have it's to more like interesting them. when we don't like it. Yeah. I mean, you get more spirited discussion when we're not all like, this was great, you know? <laughs> well, I think that's the, that brings us to the end of this book. But um, I, I would like to say I enjoyed your pick, but I did not like the book. <laughs> I did enjoy the story, but I did not I like liked the I liked the book. challenge of this pick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was a little long. <laughs> and actually, I hey, think you Nothing's have... as long as Grapes of Wrath. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> She's not wrong. Challenge accepted. No, 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 no. It's fine. I gotcha. Um, I will say that you met the challenge of choosing well for you, the honor of October. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um well i get to pick for november but we are reading it in october technically you have two <laughs> weeks of october so i wanted to still i i remembered i wanted to pick something spooky but not in the same vein yeah so not slashery gory but like spooky you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i don't know if i'm hoping neither of you have read it because i haven't Oh my gosh, what is it? Um, We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. No, but I've been dying to get into Shirley okay, Jackson good. stuff. The um, audiobook's only like five and a half hours. So. Oh, sweet. All yeah. right. Her um, stuff tends to be pretty It's called We Have too. Always Lived in... We Have in- Always Lived in the Castle. She also wrote um, The Haunting of Hill House. And I think there is oh. a miniseries based off of this novel, if I'm not mistaken. I, or there's I feel a movie like I've or seen something. something about this. There's yeah. The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Something Something. They're, that's a different one. Oh, that's, that's a different, different one. Yeah. Okay. yeah, but this is "We Have Always Lived in the Castle" by Shirley Jackson. So let me it's pull only seven ninety nine. Yeah, it's it's like a maybe not a classic, but it was written in the sixties, so it's been out for it. a long time. Um, cool. And it's one of those that like I feel like a lot of people have read, but I haven't. Anyway, um, let me find the synopsis here. Okay, so it says, six years after four family members died of arsenic poisoning, the three remaining Blackwoods, elder agoric phobic sister Constance, wheelchair-bound uncle Julian, and 18-year-old Mary Catherine, or Mary Cat, live together in pleasant isolation. Mary Cat has developed an idiosyncratic system of rules and protective magic to guard the estate against intrusions from hostile villagers. But one day a stranger arrives, Cousin Charles, with his eye on the Blackwood fortune and manages to penetrate into their carefully shielded lives. Unable to drive him away by either polite or occult means, Mary Cat adopts more desperate methods to crisis, tragedy, and the rele- revelation of a terrible secret. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, oh, so I'm excited good. to read it. So yeah. I was trying to remember uh, last year when it was my pick in November. We read Rebecca, which I love, uh, and I yes. wanted something sort of spooky like that, Very but good. I'm excited about it. So, um, any good reads? I have not read anything else this month. Oh, uh, let... well, you ready? I was going to, but just, I, I've tried to fool it, but it's shut down. Karen, Karen's phone. I hate that. Um, I re-listened to. A uh, one that we all loved, uh-huh. which was The Witches of New York. I was just thinking about that book today and I wanting to listen to it. It was just as I, good. I was thinking just about books good. that like really stuck with me and how much I really liked that yes. book. So, and it made me. I think I'm gonna spring for the other one, the uh-huh. second book, even though it's short. Um, it's like a two hour. Isn't it a prequel? Uh, no, or is that the sequel? It's a sequel, but it's like a little mini book. Oh, okay. she, they're calling it now an Audible book two, but they did call it book one point five mm. when I <laughs> looked it up. Um, there is another book that, um, like one of the characters' a, backstories. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, that's not an audio book. The only audio book is The Witches oh. of New York. So I am going to buy those books and read them as my like physical. Book. I've been trying to read one physical book a month. Mm-hmm. Um, Gosh, what a downer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I am excited to go into The Practical Magic, mm. um, which was a great movie from the 90s with Sandra Bullock and um, 
blonde nicole kidman yeah but the books are supposed to be way better mm. um so i'm reading people love i've never seen it but i know people love that the, movie. i love that movie very much uh-huh. um I'm going to read the books. There are four books in the series. She wrote them out of order of the storytelling. So the first book was released like a year ago. And I think in 2020, oh. there's a new book. That's the fourth book in the series. That so was are you reading oh. it in the order they're released? I'm going to read them in the order she wrote them. Okay. Because mm. I think it's important to follow a writer's evolution. Yeah. Because you, you, you're changing and growing through your art form. And right. I'm going to read them in the order she wrote them. Um, so that's by Alice Hoffman. So I haven't read those, but I, I started Practical to Magic tonight. And it's so... It's just, it's in, totally engaging. So it was a nice, like, after rereading The Witches of New York, it was a nice segue into kind of the same um, environment, same attitudes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited about that. Cool. I'm going to try to pull up my library before it dies. I had 57 and then it jumps to one. So that's the problem. It doesn't you read. Phone, Karen. We do, <laughs> but it's just before Christmas and that's not going to happen. Just don't die before you get to my library. I just want a glimpse of my library because I know that I have read like three other books. Floating <laughs> recommendations for my library quick, quick, quick before it dies. Um, shutting down. Never mind. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I know. I read like two other books this month and I had to, and I went back to this one and I can't think of what they are, but you I'll remember for next time. With book recommendations. Yeah, I totally will. Write them down next time and we'll. Yeah. So. All but right. like I said, I just I did just start just like a couple hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, keeping in the slasher genre, um, the uh, final, final girls group. support group. Yeah, it's a group of women who survived their slashers back in the eighties <laughs> and nineties. And now they're older women and they've been going to this therapy for like 16 years <laughs> and a couple have moved on with their life. But one of them only ever leaves her house to go to therapy or to go oh. to the market. But even then she feels really guilty if she doesn't like do lots of punches and kicks and whatever. Cause she, and she never sits, you know, she always sits in a certain format. She watches everyone's shoes because a, you know, a bad person can change their clothes, but they don't have time to change their shoes. That's so, so interesting. It's <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, plus the cover is like one of those folding chairs with blood dripping on it. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love a title. I love a title. That sounds fun. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you next month for our mm-hmm. next book. And Yay. in the meantime, uh, you can check out our regular podcast episodes. They'll come out in two weeks at the beginning of the month. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's it. Yep. Okay. Good time. Bye. Happy Halloween. Bye. Happy Halloween. Bye.